Okay, today's required practical looks at how we can measure the temperature change during a chemical reaction. But first of all, let's look at two key words that often are associated with required practical questions. Repeatable and reproducible. What are they and why are they different? If you turn to your Google Doc, you'll be able to fill in the definitions for these words at the top of that. So, repeatable is a measurement where the original experimenter can repeat the investigation and get the same results. Reproducible differs in that in this case, the experiment is repeated by another person, somebody different, but they still get the same results. One way to remember this is that it takes two people to reproduce. So therefore, repeatable is when one person does it, but reproducible is when two or more people do it. So during today's lesson, we're going to plan to carry out a practical investigation, which would allow us to collect valid data. And we're also going to analyze the results of a practical investigation and perhaps make some predictions. So again, the investigation is about the temperature change which takes place when an acid is neutralised by an alkali. If you want to watch a video about this, then if you click the hyperlink that's on your Google Doc, this will take you to the video that's shown below. Let's talk through the practical. What do we do? Well, we initially take some dilute hydrochloric acid, 30 centimetres, which we measure using a measuring cylinder, and we put it in a polystyrene cup. We use a polystyrene cup rather than a glass beaker because this will limit the amount of heat that can transfer to the surroundings. Once the hydrochloric acid is in the polystyrene cup, we then add a thermometer and a lid. We must make sure that the thermometer is below the liquid, otherwise it will be measuring the temperature of the air and not of the solution. Polystyrene cups are quite light, so to make sure that it doesn't tip over, we put the whole thing inside a glass beaker. We then need to take the temperature of the acid and record that in our table. So in this case, we're going to say that at zero centimetres cubed of sodium hydroxide, there were the temperature was 21 degrees centigrade. I'm then going to measure out five centimetres cubed of sodium hydroxide, and we're going to add that to the beaker. And we're going to watch the temperature increase until it's reached its maximum temperature. That means it's not going to go up anymore. Then I'm going to record that result in my table. So when I added five centimetres cubed, this time I'm going to say that the temperature reached about 23 degrees centigrade. I would then carry on and I would repeat the experiment, adding more centimetres cubed of sodium hydroxide, five centimetres cubed each time, so that each time my total volume that I've added has gone up five centimetres cubed. So, have a think. What did we change each time? What did we measure? And what did we keep the same? I'm going to give you a minute to think about that. Okay then, if you look at your Google Doc sheet now, you should see the beginning of this table and it will say, in this practical I will change and in this practical I will measure. 
The thing which you change is the independent variable. The thing that you measure is the dependent variable. And anything that you keep the same is a control variable. So going back to the questions we just asked, the things that we changed was the volume of sodium hydroxide. Notice I say volume and not amount. If you say amount in the exam, you get no credit for it. We're talking about liquids, we must specify volume. The thing that we measured is the temperature change. And then the thing that we kept the same was the volume of hydrochloric acid. So just taking another look at the equipment, reminding ourselves of a few things. Why did we put the polystyrene cup inside of another beaker? To stop it toppling over. Why did we put a lid? To stop the heat escaping. Why is it important that the thermometer's bulb be below the surface of the mixture? If it's not below the surface of the mixture, it's not measuring the temperature of the mixture. We need to make sure that we stir it each time to make sure the chemicals are fully mixed together. And we stop taking the temperature when it stops increasing. Okay, we now need to write an equipment list and a diagram. If you find it helpful to pause the video and just go back. The next thing we come on to is writing a method. A method should always be a series of step-by-step -step instructions on how to do the practical. If you're not sure, then rewind the video and watch it again. If we look at this set of results, we can see that we've added a total volume of sodium hydroxide up to 40 centimetres cubed. We have repeated it and assuming that the same person did it, then we can then say that the experiment is repeatable because the results are very, very similar. If we've repeated the results, then we would always take a mean. We calculate this exactly the same way as you do in maths. So we would add up the first trial to the second trial and then divide it by two. Once we have a set of results, we could draw a graph. This time, the independent variable, the thing that we changed was the volume of sodium hydroxide. So this goes along the bottom on the X axis. What we measured was the temperature increase. So this would go on the Y axis. Now, if we just plot the temperature increase, then at zero volume of sodium hydroxide we would have zero temperature increase. So we can start our line at zero, zero. And we would find that this would be a straight line. It will be directly proportional. As the volume of sodium hydroxide increased, the mean temperature would also increase. This would happen until the alkali had fully neutralized the acid. However, at that point, we may see that the temperature would start to drop. This is because once the reaction is completed, all we are adding is cold sodium hydroxide to the reaction. The effect therefore is that it cools the reaction down. So let's have a look at an exam question. Again, you will find this on your Google Doc sheet so you will be able to fill in the answers to this question. This question asked us to explain the two trends shown in on the graph. When we explain something, it's really important that we use the connective because we need to say why something is happening. The other thing you'll notice on this question, it's worth four marks and they're asking you to explain two trends. 
So you will be expected to make two points about each of the lines. Why it's gone up or why it's gone down.